guest believes that the IRS could be a valuable tool in covering uh, cases of human trafficking and child pornography within the U.S. And she points to the success of the whistleblower program that the IRS continues to run. Our guest, Lori Henderhan, is a professor and lecturer at American University. She's in Washington. Uh, Lori, you know, in terms of stories, it uh, for many people does not get any more disturbing than this. And when we speak of half of the child pornography industry, half of all that occurring and being made in the United States, a lot of people are, would be shocked at that alone. Never mind federal employees engaged in this or, or government employees engaged in this kind of thing? Yeah, Jackie, hi. Thanks for having me on. I know it's, it's a pretty steep uh, learning curve uh, for myself as well. Not only federal employees, but the military with top security clearance apparently using their dot mil email addresses, about 5,000 uh, military at the Pentagon, and the Pentagon decided not to even investigate 1,700 cases because they decided it wasn't a priority. So Senator Grassley has got that reopened, making it a priority. But yeah, it's, it's pretty staggering. It's the fastest growing crime in America. It's growing by about 150% every single year. So we don't have really, really good data on how much child porn and child trafficking is being done, but we do know that America is probably the number one place in the world right now when you combine all the figures. But you're saying it's a national crisis of federal employees engaged in the child right. porn industry. A national crisis. Well, that, what do we know about how pervasive this is? Well, th those are some of the figures that I, we're trying to get. We're, we're applying for some research grants to try to actually get some real numbers. But if you type into a Google search engine, almost any federal government agency, Department of Transportation, Homeland Security, State Department, Department of Justice, and then type in arrested for child porn afterwards, you're going to find case after case after case. If you type in police officer arrested for child porn, lawyer arrested for child porn, you're going to find case after case across the whole country. Okay, but you know, on the surface, so, this does not make sense to a lot of people. I mean, you're talking about high-ranking, mm -hmm. successful members yes. within society, never mind yes. the fact that these are people with government jobs. I mean, we presume right. that, you know, if there's a place you can't get away with it, it would be with a government job because there are layers of oversight. Well, Jackie, you would assume, for instance, that if you were an assistant attorney general in the Department of Justice under Eric Holder, who claims he cares about trafficking of children, and you did child porn on your Department of Justice work, uh, work computer, you assume you'd be held accountable. And Eric Holder refused to prosecute his own assistant attorney general who was caught doing child porn on his work computer at the Department of Justice. So when the impunity starts at that level, it just cascades all the way down. Okay, we mentioned the IRS. So they have a whistleblower program yeah. that is reaping a huge success. I mean, what are we seeing there? Well, the, the problem is it could be extremely successful, and this is what Senator Grassley and his staff have worked hard to say, this has to be successful. And this was one of the, the ideas that I came up with, with, this big whistleblower case with the IRS blue last week, where they decided to award $104 million to a, a prominent whistleblower. And so what I'm starting to see in Maine and Vermont particularly is that normally if you see child porn or you see child traffic and child sex abuse, you'd call the police and you'd assume that the police would protect the child, right? But when the police are involved in the child porn industry, the police aren't going to help you. So who do you call? So then when I saw this story about what the IRS did in Maine with this Danish health club in Kittery, Maine, the IRS is very interested in going after this because of the money laundering aspect. It's phenomenal. So are you so saying police, the, uh, judge, I mean, how pervasive is this? I mean, what I'm hearing from you is that at every level, and no one can get to the bottom of how big this is because everyone at every, le every level is involved in it. How, how has this been working? You've got to explain more about that. Okay. Well, look, look at the case in Vermont, right? Yeah. So there was a Homeland Security trainer at the police academy in Vermont who apparently was caught with a number of other people at the police academy doing child porn on police computers. That's out in the public. It was a known fact. And when you say the, the uh, homeland... doing child porn, do you mean using the computer for what purpose? Just trading images or uh, producing Tra well, it at home we'd... and then uploading it? What are we talking about in real terms? Well, we'd... Yeah, no, great question, Jackie. We don't really know because uh, so much of this is being covered up and hidden, but apparently the progression is, is sort of like an addiction to, to alcohol or drugs. So, you know, you have to constantly drinking more and more alcohol to get the, get the buzz or the feeling. So I, apparently it's the same. People start with porn and that doesn't do it. Then they go to hard porn, that doesn't get them off. Then they go into child porn. And sooner or later, just like drugs, people realize how much money they can make. Yeah. So if you're already willing to do child porn and then you realize you can make $1,000 on average a day, and this is a Department of 
justice statistics just by molesting a child in front of a live webcam. I mean, it's just incredible what, what people are doing. Is the difference, are so these American Vermont, children? Do we know, Lori, who's being victimized? Or kids overseas and images being traded well, from overseas? Do we know? I mean, it, it, it goes all over because it's global. But of course, this is American children. If half of all child porn is being produced mm -hmm. in America, these are American children. The crime requires a fresh supply of children all the time. And the under threes are the ones that they really want. Apparently, an under three-year-old is considered platinum on, on the market. But so in Vermont, Jackie, what happened was the cops then covered up the investigation, refused to release the police investigation. The Homeland Security trainer apparently committed suicide, but we don't really know because the records right. haven't been released. The attorney general of Vermont decided that he wasn't going to prosecute anybody in the case because he said suddenly there was no more evidence. And then the Rutland Herald in Vermont, a little newspaper in Vermont, sued to get the police records. Okay. And the Vermont Supreme Court said... No, these police records will never be released. And the way that the decision reads, as I understand it, is that if the police are caught doing child porn, those records will be forever sealed. That is not in the best interest of Vermont's children. That is in the best interest of a right. pedophile ring in which police and judges are Lori, involved. Lori, it sounds like the wheels are in motion. We'll keep watching it. Lori mm -hmm. Handerhan has been our guest. Thank She's you. with American University. Thanks.